Welcome everyone, Quistini here with a discussion about Grant Hierophant Katep and his campaign, which I would call probably the most ignored campaign by Creative Assembly, because while it's not the worst campaign, because the mechanics of the race work, the legendary lord works, the power is absolutely there, and it's certainly a weird situation where you have a powerful legendary lord with a good faction, a good race, good faction effects, good lord skill, good mount option, probably the best mount option in the entire game, and yet the campaign is completely miserable. And not in the way that the Warriors of Chaos are, because in Warriors of Chaos you just steamroll everything and that's the reason it's not fun, but the mechanics are perfectly workable and the campaigns are perfectly workable. So let's look at Kotep. He gets a hero capacity plus 2 for Lich Priests, a right cost of minus 25%, and Mortuary Cult crafting cost of minus 25% as well. So you can get all of these, um, you can get all of these cheaper, including getting a casket of souls for 3.7k, and right now all the rights are unlocked from turn one. And you can get, well, everything here cheaper as well. So more army capacity, those units, uh, hero capacity, it's pretty solid. And having Lich Priests from the start of your campaign does certainly give you an advantage. The reason Lich Priests are good is not because their magic is some amazing uh, piece in Total War Warhammer uh, free, but rather because you get replenishment. Now, Tomb Kings can really benefit from that. Like, having a repl replenishment is a nice benefit in any campaign. Now, Katap himself gets 10% campaign movement range as well as character experience gain plus 25%. You can make an entire hero army and level them pretty quickly in Katap's force. Then, you get a benefit to Shopti, always really nice to have because it makes them even deadlier than they are. And Shopti are certainly one of the better units that you have in the game. Uh, benefits to Nahekara Warriors, Sandstorm. Now, the Sandstorm ability is that it does quite a bit of damage. So you start with a pretty decent spell here from the start. Benefits to Horsemen, Horsemen Archers, just cavalry units in general. Unit capacity for Tomb Guard, Casualty Replenishment for Tomb Guards and his army. An extra hero capacity and hero recruit rank. And then Winds of Magic benefit and hero action success chance for him. Then you get the Mortuary Cult, which gives you a hero recruitment of Lich Priests in all provinces and another uh, capacity, research rate, construction cost in the local province, and an item that gives you magic item drop chance plus 60%, miscast chance, and the Lich Staff. So Katep is pretty strong, and you do get the Casket of Souls um, as a level 18 mount. It is something that's obviously going to take you quite a bit to acquire in your campaign, but once you do, you'll watch Katap annihilate basically entire armies on his own between his magic and his bloody overpowered artillery piece. Because caskets, caskets are fairly rare in a campaign. There's only so many you will get in a campaign because of the turn cooldown. So being able to get that as a mount option for a legendary lord... Well, it allows you to have a pretty good artillery piece in your army, even if you move the casket that you can get from turn one into another one. So that's good. In terms of starting position, he only starts at war with the Greenskins over here in the bro uh, of the Broken Chain, so the Slaves of the Dark Elves, in a really good province. So the Red Desert is a pretty solid pro uh, province because it has four regions, and it's fairly secure. I mean, Grumbrindel might be a bit of an issue. Tarks, of course, can be a bit of an issue. But the factions around you don't necessarily despise you in such a significant faction. You can make alliances with a number of them without too many uh, problems. I mean, sure, there is an aversion of minus 20, but hey, just go be beat up Malekith, and I'm sure Grimbrindle will become your best buddy pretty quickly as an idea. So, that sounds great. Why doesn't this campaign work? Why is it ignored? Why is it one of the worst campaigns, actually, in the entire game? As stated, the power is there. Well, two things. Terrain types. You're in Nagarond, and you can't settle in frozen climate. You can settle in the mountains, you can settle in the wasteland, you can settle in a decent amount of territory over here in the, in the south, in the savannah, but you cannot settle in frozen territory. So it means you can't really expand effectively in this particular part of the campaign map. And having plus 30% construction cost for all buildings as the Tomb Kings is not a great situation. 
uh, to have to deal with. On top of that, you, of course, have the annoyances of the books of Nagash, which is always really fun to have to do. Like, oh, head on to Bretonia, go into the middle of Ulfo and piss off Tyrion and Elarial and Elfarian at the same time by taking the White Tower of Hoef, and you need to take it. You can't get it from Military Alliance. And, yeah, take Hexwattle. Yes, let's piss off Mazdamundi. You know why pissing off Marafi, Mazdamundi, and Tyrion is a really bad idea in a campaign? These are some of the most powerful, potent, legendary lords in the game, and you're going to war with all of them for the books of Nagash? That is insanity. I mean, people think Matt and Fred or Nagash are completely mad. Katep, I think, put some... Uh, Katep looked at them and decided, you know what? The gauntlet is thrown down. Challenge accepted. That is ridiculous uh, to see in uh, in a campaign. And then, um, and then the problem is, in order to win said campaign, you need to get all four legions. So you're gonna waste a lot of canopic jars just to get some pretty worthless uh, units actually in the campaign for these guys. And you also need a lot of trade resources for that. Those units are not worth it at all. I mean, maybe one of them, like the Necropolis Knights, sure. But the other three, no, not at all. I'm not sure what Creative Assembly was thinking about here. If his campaign victory conditions required them to get the Books of Nagash, that would actually work a lot better. I mean, it would be brutal to deal with that, uh, but it would be workable. And if you could get the Books of Nagash for military alliances, even better, believe it. Like, it's not like this campaign can't be made good in any way, shape, or form. It can. And it's it would be pretty damn easy when you think about what it would require. Like, hey, give us the ability, and this applies to all the Toon Kings, give us the ability to get books with military alliances. You can get the Dwarven Artifacts and the Realms of Chaos, the Chaos Dwarf Artifacts, and the Realms of Chaos campaign for them for a military line, so of course the ability is there. And even worse than that, in order to win this campaign, the long vi campaign victory condition, which you can use to trigger the endgame crisis, or you could put the endgame crisis pretty early on, but the vi long campaign victory conditions force you to go back to Camry, conquer all of Camry, and, and by declaring war on everyone here. So that means Arkhan and Cetra. Arkhan, all well and good. Cetra, doesn't make a lick of sense. This is the most nonsensical campaign from a lore perspective. To explain why, Katep is incredibly loyal to Cetra. He brought Cetra back from uh, from his slumber, from the dead, if you will. And he allowed himself to be executed in end times by Cetra. Having a campaign where you declare war on Cetra is complete nonsense, uh, as I see it. Someone has suggested, or multiple people have suggested this to me, that what CA should do with this campaign and with the Tomb Kings in general, like, yeah, Arkhan has his own journey and he conquers everyone, he can. But if you're playing Kalida and Katep, you should be able to confederate in Cetra. But that, by that, I mean that Cetra would remain the faction leader, as he should be, but you obviously get him and you, get, you keep the faction effects as you have. Or maybe you can get Cetra's faction effects, but... Either way, you get the idea. And I think that would be better if, like, you just need to give him frozen uh, frozen availability in his campaign. That would significantly improve this campaign. And really, just change the victory conditions and change the way that gaining the Books of Nagash are. It isn't difficult. It's not asking for a whole damn lot. Kalida and Katep did serve under Cetra. But now we're in this uh, ridiculous situation where a character that shouldn't do this is doing this. It's also a problem in Cetra's campaign with regards to Kalida, but I consider that a far less egregious example of this, because it's not like uh, Kalida and, uh, and Cetra were best friends, or, or Kalida was the most loyal follower of uh, Cetra. Katep was. So I don't understand what CA was thinking with this campaign. I don't know what they were intending to do uh, to do about this particular campaign. It would be nice to have this situation improved. And again, as I state, it's not something that requires a rework. The Tomb Kings don't require a rework. They just need damn fixes to their victory conditions, to confederations, the addition of confederation, uh, not 
just slaughtering each other for power and dominance or having a mechanic where you can just gain control over, over the other tomb kings like Arkan actually served Cetra for a while because well Arkan tried to defeat Cetra he failed Cetra couldn't defeat Arkan completely so Arkan bent the knee to Cetra but it was always you know touch and go with respect to that so I think some kind of uh, political uh, situation with the Tomb Kings would make a heck of a lot more sense than what we're currently seeing. I mean, yes, you do have the ability of vassalizing factions, and I guess you could consider that part of it, but vassalizing factions won't matter for uh, for crap. You need to hold the, these territories for yourself because you need to build the pyramids in the campaign yourself. There's, there's your issue there. That said, you could play him as a wanderer and just make that journey to uh Camry with him maybe pick uh, maybe taking the sea lane over here um or not necessarily the sea lane actually uh the sea lane here I mean and this would put you in cafe and while a lot of cafe and territory isn't good if you go west enough from cafe You'll eventually end up in Darklands, the mountains over here, and the climate here is suitable. Maybe playing this campaign with the climate suitability mod that just removes the climate completely, basically the climate penalties completely, would be the better choice if you do decide to do it. I feel bad for Katep because I think he's an interesting character. I think his effects are good. I think you have a very unique Tomb King campaign with him, but it just doesn't work. Kostin Sanya, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.